Hello and welcome to the Gather Round Oddities. Thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. It's been amazing. Let's try to get to 15,000. If you're new, please do like and subscribe. After Zorko kicked a cheeky goal, is there a somewhat AFL YouTube celebrity in the crowd there? Someone of the egg variety? Is that you? We could probably talk about this one forever. The ball was touched. I think it's very hard for the umpire to make the call on the spot whether this was touched or not. He clearly didn't see it. There's multiple umpires and I doubt I would have been able to see it. You can see with the camera zoomed in, yes, you definitely can. But on the day, in that spot, could the umpire see it? Probably not. It probably wasn't obvious enough. Now, that leads to my next question. Do you think we should bring in that coaches slash captains challenge? It may slow down the game a fair bit like it has in the NBL and the NRL but what do you think should this be introduced leave a comment below how odd is the shape of the Norwood oval I've never seen such straight lines on a footy oval seen it many times in the sandfall but never really showcased it this well such as this drone shot I reckon after Bonner receives the handball, he looks like he's he fakes a defender and he's going to go kick the ball. But Morris Rioli just comes out of nowhere. You can actually see him on the previous play. He's probably about 20 metres away. And he just comes from nowhere and just absolutely destroys him. What a wicked tackle. You love to see it. I know it's dying seconds in the game and the umpire's unlikely to make this sort of call. But you can see Quainor gets control of the ball and he sort of just holds the ball and pretends like he's trying to keep it in play before bringing it back. With very limited defense and defensive pressure from the Hawks. I would be so upset if the umpire actually called insufficient intent to keep the ball in. It's probably the right call. If this happened in the second quarter with 10 minutes left, it probably would have got called. But being in the final quarter with being a such a close game in the end, it wasn't called. What do you think? Should that have been called insufficient intent? Jamara Yukelhagen gets the ball, he beats his defender, and he has a easy run-in set shot at goal, but somehow completely shanks it off the inside of his right boot, and it goes out of bounds on the full. This one was a little odd for me because you can clearly see the umpire, the goal umpire, believes that it's gone through for a behind. The field umpire signals with the single hand up, meaning it's a point, and then the ball's kicked in. But then for some reason, there's a call made to bring the ball back and go to score review. I've never actually seen it where they bring it back after that. You can with a goal, because they have to review in between the goal when it gets balled up. But this one was actually called back. Turns out it was a mark. I don't agree with that. I don't think he had full control of the ball before it went over the line. But anyway, he goes through and I believe he kicks a goal. Do you think this was the right call? Somehow Max King has kicked this goal. It's a snap on the right from that pocket. That should have been going towards the top of the goal square, not through for a goal. That is the definition of odd. The mysteries of the AFL shape football. What a brilliant way to respond. Max King dropped the mark and threw it. Uh, who else but Harry Mackay? He takes the mark. He's beat his defender. He runs into an easy open goal and drops the ball. I don't know what else to say. I think this could only happen to him. Sanders gets the ball and he's absolutely clear from a throw-in. Only problem is he's going the wrong way. Didn't the umpires say just last week that Jack Ginevan was getting unfair treatment and they missed some calls? And then this week they just do the exact same thing again, I guess. Only in the second quarter and it didn't cost them the game in the end, but this one is could be classified as a coach killer. He gets the ball inside the 450, can go back and take the set shot, but decides to play on and then misses. I'm sure he'd want that one back again. Shay Bolton was absolutely elite on the weekend. You can see even when he doesn't get a stat, he's still so important to the Tigers. This one is the rare double oddity as Emmett goes for a set shot at goal. It's an absolute stinker. It does get touched, but you can just tell by the kick it's definitely not making the distance anyway. And then it goes forward and Tabner lays a bump. I don't think this is a tackle and gets called for holding the ball. The very rare double oddity. After a bit of a scramble, Petrarca ends up with the ball and he's immediately tackled. He tries to drop the ball onto his boot. He misses, hangs his head in shame because he knows he's been done, but it wasn't called. If a player hangs his head like that, surely he knows he, that should have been holding the ball. But for some reason, the umpire just didn't call it. 
Talk about coach killers, Zerk Thatcher kicks it into the Ford 50 with just 10 seconds left with the game very close at this point. And there's three bomber defenders there and neither of them try to touch the ball. Probably should have been Draper's ball. He's let it bounce, it gets up and then in the end Finlayson kicks the goal. That one hurts. How's the pluck here from Petrarca? Just pulls it in with one hand so casually. Dixon also had a very nice one-handed pluck, but in the end, destroys it with a terrible shank kick at goal. Does Dunkley hate Jerry? He just handles it straight into his face. It's pretty funny. You always love seeing a Falcon, even if it is an accident, or possibly on purpose. Still funny. Yet another coach killer. Have no idea what Hine was doing. He was clearly in two minds, I guess. He was either had the set shot at goal or passed to his teammate. Passes to the teammate, but it's way too long out of bounds in the fall. You're this far out and you're free. You have to go for the goal. Even a point is better than what happened. Not sure if the umpire got blinded by the sun, but this is an easy mark to McCarthy. Somehow gets spoiled after the ball's been controlled, but still is called play on. But then something like Stengel's mark, which wasn't controlled, is a mark. I don't know. Marlon Pickett tries to sell the candy to Wilkie, but he doesn't fall for it and ends up landing the sweet tackle and he's called holding the ball. Well done to Wilkie. Gotta love Jake Lever's passion for the game. This little stomp thing just reminds me of a toddler or something. But he pulled it in pretty quick to not give away the 50 metre penalty. We saw Ollie Wines do this last week and then Jake Lever did it as well. I guess he didn't think the umpire blew the whistle quick enough so he tried to play on. I think the umpire can have the right to say bring it back because the umpire was a bit late on the whistle in my opinion. This one was in the injuries but you can see McGovern lay a bump and then ends up cracking a tooth or losing a tooth and you can see he just hands it to the runner like it's nothing. That's pretty tough. Membry spent it before he earned it. You can see in the forward line that there, is, there are so many options but he just, I don't know, he was already making his mind up. Was he going to kick the goal? Was he going to pass it? But in the end, he had no option for either because he forgot to pick the ball up. Desma must be pretty quiet because Joe Danaher had no idea who was right behind him and got the chase down tackle. Uh, not really sure if it's a chase down, but anyway, he got the free kick. But pretty poor defense from his teammates as well to let him know that you're about to be tackled, hand, ball it, or kick it. Man, wouldn't you love Rosie to be on your team? Even I would. I'm a Crows fan and he just slices through the defense no one comes at him because he he fakes the handball check side kick and goes through for a goal he's an absolute gun solid mark by harris andrews here always love a good defensive play fantasia ends up with a really nice steal and he runs towards the goal kicks it in all he needs is the bounce but it's got backspin and it doesn't even make the distance if he kicked it slightly different from more the back of the ball this would have rolled through for a goal Here's another double oddity, possibly. Jake Stringer, I don't think he controls the ball the whole time. It looks like he does juggle it over the boundary. The boundary umpires again don't make the call. But then he fakes the player, which is a play on, but he's out of bounds, so you're out of bounds. Throw it in. Just a quick little Falcon for Archie Perkins here. How's the fake from battle? He gets him once, twice, three times. Come on, guys. Gotta love the triple fake, though. I think this might be the most odd out-of-bounds on the fall I have ever seen. Hewitt kicks the ball down the line, but it actually ends up coming off the Fremantle's foot as he kicks it into his foot and then out. And obviously that means it's out of bounds on the full by Frio, so it's a Carlton free kick. Very odd. It's up for 
Josh Weddle copped a massive Falcon to the face from Lockie Schultz. After watching this one a couple times, I have no idea what Petrocelli was trying to do here. He passes it to Waterman, I guess who is running in towards goal, but Petrocelli doesn't know who's behind him, and he can kind of see the disgust on Waterman's face. And of course, West Coast turn it over and just... It's pretty much the embodiment of West Coast Eagles at the moment. Atkins gets called for a high hit here, but I'm not entirely sure what he's meant to do. West is out of control, he's stumbling forward, and Atkins just happens to be there and bump his head onto Atkins' hip, but that's a free kick against Atkins. What does the umpire want to see Atkins do in this exact point in time? I don't like the call. Both Parfit and English jump on the ball, but I think English has a bit more control of the ball, but the ball just fumbles. Usually the umpire calls his whistle, but he doesn't, and all the players sort of just stand still waiting for the whistle, but it just never comes. This is pretty odd for our final clip. Nick Lucky takes the mark, and then Harris Andrews knocks the ball out, and it probably, from first glance, I actually thought this was going to be 50 metre penalty. The umpire's called a mark, but then he gets to take his mark back, So, which is very strange because if the defender knocks it out, it should be 50 metre penalty, but watching the replay, it actually looks like Nick Lucky plays on and the ball's knocked out, so it should have been play on. But the umpire's chosen the decision to neither pay the play on or the mark and the 50 meter penalty. In the end, I don't know. What do you think? That one's just weird to me. And that's it for this week. The code word, if you want to leave a comment below, is gather. And a massive thank you to my elite supporters, Big Mac John, Kanga Kanga Kanga, Roo Roo Roo, Sean Ducks, and Flex. If you guys would like to make the support list at the end. Be sure to join as a member. Thank you all very much, and I'll see you next week. Thank you again for the 10,000 subscribers.